Lou Gehrig delivered a great speech on Lou Gehrig Appreciation Day at Yankee Stadium on July 4th, 1939. However, what made this speech memorable and powerful was the rhetorical situation in which it was given. Let's look at the speaker, context, and audience of the speech and do a quick analysis of its tone. Lou Gehrig was known for being a strong and durable baseball player. He played 14 seasons or 2,130 consecutive games. No sick days, no off days, no nothing. His nickname was the Iron Horse because of his strength as a hitter and his durability as a player. With a 340 lifetime batting average and 493 home runs, Gehrig was a living legend. Gehrig's fairy tale career turned to tragedy, however, when he was diagnosed with ALS. He was told he had a few years left to live. That's it. He retired from baseball immediately. His fate seemed unlucky and cruel. Gehrig went from being a famed athlete and cultural icon to having a rare incurable disease. Oh yeah, and he was given this news on his 36th birthday. The Yankees franchise, professional baseball, and fans across the country were stunned. In response to this devastating news, the New York Yankees, the team Gehrig played for, held Lou Gehrig Appreciation Day on July 4, 1939. Gehrig's illness was already causing him to become weak. Whether or not he would speak on this day remained a mystery. Gehrig was shy, and he had voiced to others that he did not want to speak. Finally, after some nudging, and after it looked like Gehrig wouldn't speak, and after the crowd began chanting his name, he stepped to the microphone located at home plate. With no paper or notes in his hand, he said this, For the past two weeks, you have been reading about a bad break. The use of bad break here seemed odd, since it was clearly an understatement. Bad break is an expression used, perhaps, when a player sprains his ankle in the World Series, or when a ball takes a bad hop and the other team gets a lucky run. It is not an expression you would expect to use when you've recently learned that you have an incurable disease. Yet today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. This line now sets the tone for the rest of the speech. The word luckiest is such a contrast to the situation that it is shocking. The more appropriate word to describe Lou Gehrig's situation is unlucky. His optimism and gratefulness is accentuated by the harrowing situation he finds himself in. I have been in ballparks for 17 years and have never received anything but kindness and encouragement from you fans. Now we have an obvious exaggeration by Gehrig. He was not always treated with kindness. By looking at the bright side, however, Gehrig continues with a grateful and optimistic tone. When you look around, wouldn't you consider it a privilege to associate yourself with such a fine-looking man as they're standing in uniform in this ballpark today? Sure, I'm lucky. Who wouldn't consider it an honor to have known Jacob Rupert? Also, the builder of baseball's greatest empire, Ed Barrow. To have spent six years with that wonderful little feller, Miller Higgins. Then to have spent the next nine years with that outstanding leader, that smart student of psychology, the best manager in baseball today, Joe McCarthy. Sure, I'm lucky. Once again, Garrett continues with an optimistic and grateful tone. Let's look at his word choices. Privilege, lucky, honor, greatest, wonderful, outstanding, smart, best, and lucky. At this point, it is obvious that Gehrig, in the face of adversity and tragedy, is choosing to remain grateful. The repetition of, sure, I'm lucky, illuminates his optimism. His strength and durability as a player, the characteristics that made him a legend on the field, now pale in comparison with his courage and mental strength he demonstrates off the field. 
When the New York Giants, a team you would give your right arm to beat and vice versa, send you a gift, that's something. When everybody down to the groundskeepers and those boys in white coats remember you with trophies, that's something. When you have a wonderful mother-in-law who takes sides with you and squabbles with her own daughter, that's something. When you have a father and a mother who work all their lives so you can have an education and build your body, it's a blessing. When you have a wife who has been a tower of strength and shown more courage than you dream existed, that's the finest I know. Garrick now shifts his gratefulness and optimism away from baseball and towards his family. For the audience of the speech, fans at Yankee Stadium, this further humanizes Garrick. This legend on the field has been supported by family, and Garrick is grateful for this. This is demonstrated by, the, by his repetition of that something, and it's a blessing. So I close in saying that I might have been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to live for. Thank you. Garrick's last line finalizes his message that he is not going to dwell on a bad break or his disease, but he's going to focus on the life he still has to live. In a sense, Garrick's situation is an example of what all humans must face, inevitable death. Garrick's optimism and gratefulness, though, serve as an inspiring example of courage and strength.